will be in order. The House will be in order. <laughs> the prayer will be offered by our chaplain, Chaplain Kibben. Would you pray with me? Today, O oh God, we lay before you our petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving. We request that you bestow upon us the joy of your presence among us, that when we look upon the faces of those who labor in these halls, known and unknown, elected or employed, we may see your image. We pray for the health and welfare of this illustrious body, that as the scenery changes and the actors move on, around, or off the stage, you will uphold each one. Guide them in the roles you have called them to fulfill and grant them wisdom to discern the way you would have them go. Lord, may our prayers serve as an intercession for those who do not have enough courage or strength to speak their own needs, for those who haven't enough faith to trust what lies ahead, and for those who do not know how to receive the mercy you offer us. Then accept our offerings of thanksgiving to you for the bounty you lay before us, the gift to labor, to serve, and contribute our energies wherever you call us, but especially here in this, our nation's capital. May our words be good and pleasing to you as we pray them in your most holy name. Amen. Thank you. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House her approval thereof. Pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, the journal stands approved. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by the gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Wilson. Everyone, including our guests in the gallery, please join in. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, The chair will entertain up to 15 requests for one-minute speeches on each side of the aisle. For this, does the gentlewoman from New Hampshire seek recognition? Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, I rise today to celebrate the passage of the Speak Out Act. As the co-chair of the Bipartisan Task Force to End Sexual Violence, I've seen how perpetrators of workplace sexual assault and harassment hide behind non-disclosure agreements to sweep their heinous conduct under the rug. Let's remember that the vast majority of assault and harassment in the workplace goes unreported, and most perpetrators are never held accountable. It takes tremendous courage for survivors to come forward. I am so proud that under the leadership of Speaker Nancy Pelosi, this House overwhelmingly passed the Speak Out Act yesterday, and we have sent this common sense bipartisan bill to the President's desk. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania seek recognition? Madam Speaker, requesting unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. And Without objection, the remarks. gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise today to recognize November as National Career Development Month. As co-chair of the Bipartisan House Career and Technical Education Caucus, I was proud to introduce the National Career Development Month resolution last week with my CTE Caucus co-chair and good friend, Congressman Jim Langevin. National Career Development Month raises awareness of future career opportunities and development programs for all individuals. A highly skilled workforce is a business's number one asset and provides a competitive edge. National Career Development Month also is a time to recognize the professionals who guide learners to become leaders of tomorrow. Throughout the month, schools uh, and businesses will have the chance to showcase different career paths that align with various interests and skills. 
These opportunities will better prepare students as they begin to enter the workforce. As we, develop, as we continue through National Career Development Month, I'd like to encourage employers, students, and workers of all ages to take advantage of career development, putting them in the driver's seat of their career. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time. And for what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I ask Anne's consent to address the House for one minute and to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, I rise today in honor of Transgender Awareness Week. Trans Americans made history this year by running and winning in more elections than ever before. Breakthrough representations in media have led to historic numbers of transgender and non-binary characters on screen. In many ways, transgender Americans are more visible than ever. And at the same time, the trans community has been forced to withstand severe attacks. From laws that would strip fundamental rights to dehumanizing vitriol deployed by elected officials and public figures. These attacks treat trans people as threats to society rather than neighbors, parents, children, friends, and loved ones. There are more than two million people in the United States that identify as transgender or non-binary. Trans Americans exist in all walks of life, all across the country. This Transgender Week, I call on my colleagues to turn awareness into action. And to the trans community, you have allies in Congress. And let it be known that there's been no greater friend of trans people in this country or LGBTQ people than Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And we will not cease to fight, to protect, and advocate for our transgender siblings, Inspired. not just this week, but all year long. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am grateful to recognize the 2022 Army Congressional Fellow, Master Sergeant John Gardner, for his service to the 2nd District of South Carolina. His year-long service with the office is ending, and John will be missed. Not only has he been in Dispensable coordinator and contributor to legislative goals, including the National Defense Authorization Act, but a valued team player, including a combat tour on the front line of infantry medic in Iraq. John has held many leadership assignments throughout his 20-year decorated career in the Army, including most recently in the Defense Attaché Office of the American Embassy in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. John hails from Houston, Texas, has a master's degree from Colorado State, and holds two graduate degrees. His next assignment is in the Pentagon, where John will be a valued participant of Peace Through Strength. In conclusion, God bless our troops who successfully protected America for 20 years as the global war on terrorism continues, moving from the Afghanistan safe haven to America. Godspeed, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. For what purpose? For what purpose does the gentleman from Massachusetts uh, seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, I rise today to discuss the urgent need to tackle the affordable housing crisis. The cost of housing is the single biggest challenge facing the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Last week, I hosted an affordable housing conference in Attleboro with my friend and colleague, Juana Matias, the HUD Regional Administrator for New England. We spoke with housing officials and developers across the district about the programs and funding available for affordable housing development. I reiterated my commitment to policies from zoning reform to LIHTC expansion to increase production of affordable housing. Expanding affordable housing is a multi-government effort that needs support on the federal, state, and local level. As the next Congress approaches, we must recommit ourselves to making housing more affordable for working families. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlewoman from Iowa seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I seek unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to recognize Christina Schauer, a veteran and nurse from Dubuque, Iowa, whose courage and dedication to serving others is unmatched. Christina served our country overseas as a combat medic in Iraq. Our veterans face immense challenges when returning home, and unfortunately, our women veterans are often afraid to speak up about their experiences. They may feel invisible or that their service wasn't worthy, and as a result, they may be less likely to seek the care that they have earned.
But Christina is working to right this wrong by sharing her own story. She has championed women veteran visibility, empowering her sisters in sacrifice to talk more about their service and seek the health care and the benefits they deserve. So Christina, thank you for your service and for your commitment to empower women veterans. You are an inspiration to all of us. So I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. For what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois seek recognition? Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute and revise and extend Without the objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, I rise today to honor the life of my friend Karen Sutton, who recently passed away after a long, hard fight with cancer. Karen spent much of her life in Springfield and was a valued member of our community, always volunteering and attending events all the way up to a few weeks before she passed. After a long and successful career in data processing, Karen retired from the Illinois Department of Health in 2002. Karen spent much of her time in the bowling alley, playing in multiple leagues and eventually becoming the league secretary. Karen also enjoyed traveling to national Mustang shows where she won many awards. These shows put on by the Mustang Club of America allowed Karen to connect with a community of drivers from all over the nation whom she greatly valued. She was also praised for her hard work in helping the judging secretaries during these fun yet competitive events. I'm grateful to have known Karen and her husband, Carol, for many years, and I'm thankful for all of her work to make our community a better place to live. Karen is survived by her husband, Carol, daughter, Julie, and son, Brent. My condolences to the entire Sutton family during this difficult time. Karen, may you rest in peace. For what purpose does the gentleman from Mississippi seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to address the House floor for one minute and to advise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you. Madam Speaker, I rise today to honor the 100-year anniversary of the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. Mississippi Farm Bureau is the largest agriculture organization in the state and represents the social and economic interests of farmers, ranchers, and rural communities. Its statewide grassroots structure allows it to be an effective organization, representing and promoting 17 commodities in Mississippi. The organization is a valuable resource on issues of importance to our farm families, and it works with federal and state lawmakers to advocate for these priorities. I look forward to continuing to work with Mississippi Farm Bureau on important agriculture issues in the future. May God bless our farmers, and may God continue to bless Mississippi Farm Bureau. Thank you, and I yield back. Uh, for what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is uh, recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As uh, I watch my home state of California go down in flames, literally, as we watch how we're running out of electricity, we're running out of water, our store shelves are having less and less food varieties available, our farmers being pushed out of business, our farm workers being pushed out of business, as we see all these things happen with mandates coming down the pike, requiring more and more electricity has to be renewable. What is the answer in California? Let's tear down some hydroelectric dams in my district and Mr. Benz's district. Let's tear them down. We're going to lose green power, Go do it over the objections of the people that live there and have objected by over 70 percent to the removal of these dams, all for an unproven environmental benefit. So enjoy that even less electricity, enjoy even less food grown in my district and Mr. Benz's district, enjoy even more the crisis that is facing us in rural California, rural America, and in our store shelves and in our electrical wires due to even more unfounded environmental rules being forced Gentlemen's upon time us expired. to tear out perfectly good hydroelectric dams. Thanks one hell of a lot. Uh, for what purpose does the gentleman from North Carolina, gentlewoman, I'm sorry, from North Carolina seek recognition? I ask you now consent to address the House, Madam Speaker. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. 
Madam Speaker, I rise to recognize Randy Whittington, Gary Foster, Angela Rogers, and Joey Haney of the Retail Solutions Group in Wilkesboro, North Carolina. I was proud to join them recently at a ribbon cutting ceremony for their fourth and largest warehouse. In the last few years, Retail Solutions Group has grown from fewer than eight employees to now over 200. This is a magnificent accomplishment. Madam, Madam Speaker, North Carolina remains a hub for entrepreneurship and innovation, thanks to people such as Randy, Gary, Angela, and Joy. Congratulations to Retail Solutions Group on this new and exciting chapter. I look forward to hearing more about the strides you will make in the days and months ahead. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania seek recognition? Consent to address the House for one Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, as we here in the House and our country come near the close of 2022, the United States has gone through the worst year on our record for illegal border crossings. Uh, meanwhile, we have a Homeland Security Secretary that tells us regularly that the border is secure. Just this last month, over 230,000 illegals have uh, crossed that we know of. Along with this, gasoline prices are over $4 a gallon again, and the cost of Thanksgiving for most families will be over 20% what it was last year. This has been a troubling year. America needs a new course. This House needs a new course, a new direction, and new priorities that strengthen America and Americans. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Uh, for what purpose does the gentlewoman from California seek recognition? consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as we gather here, we stand on sacred ground, the chamber of the United States House of Representatives, the heart of American democracy. I will never forget the first time I saw the Capitol. It was on a cold January day when I was six years old. My father, Thomas Del Sandro Jr., was about to be sworn in for his fifth term in Congress, representing our beloved hometown of Baltimore. I was riding the car with my brothers, and they were thrilled and jumping up and down and saying to me, Nancy, look, Nancy, look, there's the Capitol. And I keep, every time I'd say, I don't see any capital. Is it a capital A, a capital B, or a capital C? <laughs> and finally, I saw it. A stunning white building with a magnificent dome. I believed then, as I believe today, this is the most beautiful building in the world because of what it represents. The Capitol is a temple of our democracy, of our Constitution, of our highest ideals. On that day, <laughs> on that day, I stood with my father on this floor as he took a sacred oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies foreign and domestic. All of us who have served in this House have taken the hallowed oath of office, and it is the oath that stitches us together in a long and storied heritage. Colleagues who served before us are all our colleagues. Colleagues like Abraham Lincoln, Daniel Webster, Shirley Chisholm, Patsy Mink, and our beloved John Lewis. Personally, it binds me as a colleague to my father, a proud New Deal to congressman and one of the earliest Italian Americans to serve in the Congress. And this is an oath we are duty bound to keep, and it links us with the highest aspirations of the ages. In this room, our colleagues across history have abolished slavery, granted women the right to vote, established Social Security and Medicare, offered a hand to the weak, care to the sick, education to the young, and hope to the many. Indeed, it is here 
under the gaze of our patriarch, George Washington, in the people's house, that we have done the people's work. My colleagues, I stand before you as Speaker of the House, as a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a devout Catholic, a proud Democrat, and a patriotic American, a citizen of the greatest republic in the history of the world. <laughs> Which President Lincoln called the last best hope on earth. Indeed, in the words attributed to another of our colleagues, the legendary Daniel Webster, he said, hold on, my friends, to the Constitution of your country and the government established under it. Miracles do not cluster. That which has happened but once in 6,000 years cannot be expected to happen often. Indeed, American democracy is majestic, but it is fragile. Many of us here have witnessed its fragility firsthand, tragically, in this chamber. And so democracy must be forever defended from forces that wish it harm. Last week, the American people spoke, and their voices were raised in defense of liberty, of the rule of law, and of democracy itself. With these elections, the people stood in the breach and repelled the assault on democracy. They resoundedly rejected violence and insurrection, and in doing so, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. And now we owe to the American people our very best to deliver on their faith, to forever reach for the more perfect union, the glorious horizon that our founders promised. The questions before this Congress and in this moment are urgent, questions about the ideals that this House is charged by the Constitution to preserve and protect establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, our posterity, our children. Babies born today will live into the next century, and our decisions will determine their future for generations to come. While we will have our disagreements on policy, we must remain fully committed to our shared fundamental mission, to hold strong to our most treasured democratic ideals, to cherish the spark of divinity in each and every one of us, and to always put our country first. In their infinite wisdom, our founders gave us their, kind, their guidance, e pluribus unum, from many one. They could not have imagined how large our country would become or how different we would be from one another. But they knew we had to be united as one. We the people, one country, one destiny. It has been with great pride in my 35 years in the House, I have seen this body grow more reflective of our great nation, our beautiful nation. <laughs> When I came to the Congress in 1987, there were 12 Democratic women. Now they're over 90, and we want more. The new members of our Democratic Caucus will be about 75% women, people of color, and LGBTQ. And we have brought more voices to the decision-making table. When I entered leadership 
In 2002, there were eight of us. Today, there are 17 members of the leadership. When I first came to the floor at six years old, never would I have thought that someday I would go from homemaker to house speaker. In fact, I never... <laughs> In fact, I never intended to run for public office. Mommy and Daddy taught us through their example that public service is a noble calling and that we all have a responsibility to help others. In our family, my brother Tommy then became mayor of Baltimore also. But it's been my privilege to play a part in forging extraordinary progress for the American people. I have enjoyed working with three presidents achieving historic investments in clean energy with President George Bush. <laughs> Transformative health care reform with President Barack Obama. And forging, and forging the future from infrastructure to health care to climate action with President Joe Biden. <laughs> now we must move boldly into the future, grounded by the principles that have propelled us this far and open to fresh possibilities for the future. Scripture teaches us that for everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. My friends, no matter what title you all, my colleagues, have bestowed upon me, speaker, leader, whip, there is no greater official honor for me than to stand on this floor and to speak for the people of San Francisco. This I will continue to do as a member of the House, speaking for the people of San Francisco, serving the great state of California, and defending our Constitution. And with great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek re-election to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. And I'm grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility. Madam Speaker, standing here today, I'm endlessly grateful for all of life's blessings, for my Democratic colleagues whose courage and commitment with the support of your families have made many of these accomplishments possible. In fact, could not have been done without you. For my dear husband, Paul, who has been my beloved partner in life and my pillar of support, thank you. We're all grateful for all the prayers and well wishes as he continues his recovery. Thank you so much. Our darling children, Nancy, Corinne, Christine, Jacqueline, Paul, and Alexandra, and our grandchildren, Alexandra and Madeline, Liam, Sean, and Ryan, Paul and Thomas, Bella and Octavio, <laughs> they are the joys of our lives for whom we um, and we are so very, very proud of them and a comfort to us at this time. <laughs> And for my brilliant, dedicated, and patriotic staff, 
under the leadership of Terry McCullough, together, working together, the finest group of public servants the House has ever known. Thank you all so much. And again, for those who sent me here, for the people of San Francisco for entrusting me with the high honor of being their voice in Congress. In this continued work, I will strive to honor the call of the patron saint of our city, St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. In this house, we begin each day with a prayer and a pledge to the flag, and every day, I am in awe of the majestic miracle that is American democracy. As we participate in a hallmark of our republic, the peaceful orderly transition from one Congress to the next, let us consider the words of, again, President Lincoln, spoken during one of America's darkest hours. He called upon us to come together, to swell the chorus of the Union, when once again touched, as surely they will be, by the better angels of our nature. That again is the task at hand. A new day is dawning on the horizon, and I look forward, always forward, to the unfolding story of our nation, a story of light and love, of patriotism and progress, of many becoming one and always an unfinished mission to make the dreams of today the reality of tomorrow. Thank you all. May God bless you and your families, and may God bless, continue to bless our veterans and the United States of America. Thank you all so much.
being told by the speakers. What's the first? The House will be in order. 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 Members can take their conversations off the floor. The House will be in order.
Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the Chair will postpone further proceedings today on motions to suspend the rules on which a recorded vote of the yeas and nays are ordered or votes objected to under Clause 6 of Rule 20. The House will resume proceedings on post -quote postponed questions at a later time. The House will be in order. Members are asked to take their conversations off the floor. The House will be in order. For what purpose does the gentleman from Louisiana seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill S3095 as amended. Thirty ninety two as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Senate thirty ninety two. An act to amend the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act to improve the provision of certain disaster assistance and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Carter, and the gentleman from California, Mr. Lamalfo, 